Hey guys, it's Captain Nabs here with you once again for another FS Economy walkthrough video. And as you probably read in the video title today, we're going to be talking about FBOs. What they are, how you get one, how do you make money out of one in the FS Economy world. So first of all, a little bit of background. What is an FBO? In the real world, an FBO is a fixed based operator. Basically, they are a service station available at an airport. FBOs can range in size from the smallest little FBO, which may be little more than a, a shack with a couple of gas pumps next to the ramp, to uh, some very large sprawling complexes with facilities for pilot lounges and uh, briefing rooms, hangars, maintenance facilities, as well as, of course, mobile fuel trucks. Uh, some will even have flight schools and uh, other associated services. So basically almost any service that uh, can be run out of, a, out of a hangar or an office at an airport uh, could be run by an FBO. In the real world, most FBOs are owned by private businesses. Occasionally, they might be run by the airport authority themselves when a private business wasn't viable or maybe the airport authority just wants to maintain control and a monopoly over their uh, local uh, business. So how does an FBO function in the FS economy world? Well, the FBO world in FS economy is quite a bit simpler than it is in the real world. It basically is restricted to a very small number of businesses that help support pilots in the FS economy world. But before we talk about really what an FBO can do, let's talk about how we can get an FBO. So there's three ways that you can obtain an FBO in the FS economy world. The first one is you can purchase one outright. Like anything else in FS Economy, it's a simulation and you can either sell publicly or privately, just like an aircraft. You can put your air FBO up for sale if you no longer want to operate it and someone can walk along and offer you the money and buy it. Here's the list of current FBOs for sale in FS Economy as of right now. And as you can see, they start at $75,000 and they run way up. The this is probably a little bit unrealistic. This person's asking a billion dollars, but uh, for the one in Indianapolis, someone's asking seventeen and a half million dollars. Again, that's probably a bit extreme, but it's an economic simulation. If somebody thinks that uh, there's a market for that price, they will. Uh, they'll do it. They'll 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 put it out there, and uh, who knows? Maybe it will sell. So in order to uh, buy an FBO, you literally just go to that purchase FBO page. As long as you have enough money in your bank account, you can buy any FBO. You can, of course, do the research before you get there as to what uh, what an FBO is all about. Let's just pick one at random here, Dalyar Aviation in Azerbaijan. Um, it gives you the airport it's at, a little bit of information about its size and uh, the uh, commodities that it has. So when you purchase the FBO, you also purchase a commodity stored there. So uh, that's almost worth more than the FBO itself in some cases. And you can always go to the airport information page to find out more about how many operations per month, which is kind of a determining factor on whether or not your FBO is going to make money. And this place doesn't have a whole lot of operations, so probably not worth a whole lot. But that is how uh, you can purchase an FBO. The second way to get an FBO is by a lottery. So there's a special page here for FBO lotteries and once a week there is a drawing held and all of these FBOs are raffled away. So there's a list of FBOs up for up for the lottery and uh, you have the option of purchasing a ticket. The ticket price is set here and the ticket price is non-refundable once purchased. You can't change your mind. If you lose, of course, you don't get the money refunded. So this is a it's a gamble to buy a ticket. Uh, the nice thing it does do here is it shows you if anybody else has already purchased a ticket for this FBO. So when you're thinking about, hmm, do I want to try the, try my luck here? If you see it says no and it's the last day before the drawing, which uh, in this case it pretty much is, if I buy a ticket today, there's a good chance that that hundred grand is going to result to me owning that FBO without too many other people having a chance of buying it. So uh, you can participate in these lotteries. It doesn't tell you how many people have bought these FBOs. Uh, again, you can look at the information uh, for the various airports and see what you're getting. But it doesn't tell you how many people have bought a ticket. So you don't know if it's a 50-50 raffle. You don't know if it's a 1 in 4 chance or a 1 in 50 chance. Um, it is a lottery and you don't know what the odds are. It's just a gamble. So if you have a little bit of money to gamble in FS Economy and some of these places strike your fancy, you can certainly go ahead and buy a ticket. The third way that you can uh, obtain ownership of an FBO in FS Economy is to actually build one yourself. This is not something that most of you are probably going to do because it's uh, a little bit intensive and it's a little bit hard to find airports that don't have an FBO already. Most of the airports in the FS Economy world already have an FBO if they can support one. and so only the smallest airports usually are places where you will find that that do not have an FBO already. 
But I'm going to go through the effort of building an FVO for you guys just to show you how the whole thing works and it'll give you a good introduction to all the different components of an FVO. So before we talk about building an FPO, let's talk a little bit about airport sizes and FBO sizes, because that will determine where you can build an FBO. So if we go to the airport page, and just for an example, we're going to do a search around the Ottawa airport for 50 miles. And this is going to bring up a whole bunch of airport results. What I want you to look at is the very first column here where it lists the airport uh, identifier, and you'll see a little symbol next to it. These little symbols uh, indicate the relative size of the airport. The circle with no runways indicated is considered a small airport, a level one airport. The symbol with a one runway only indicated within it is a medium sized airport, a level two airport. And then if you have two runways within the symbol, that is a level three airport or a large airport. The big determination or the big factor that this airport size plays is on how many FBO lots are then available at an airport. So if you go to a small airport, you will only have one FBO lot. And here's one that actually still has one lot remaining for FBO construction. So it actually tells you right here, there is one lot remaining for FBO construction. A small airport will only have one lot available. A medium sized airport will have two lots. There are two lots remaining for FBO construction at this airport and a large airport, I'm probably not likely to find one, will have three uh, FBO lots. So there are three different uh, parcels of land where you can build an FBO at a large airport. When you build an FBO initially, it only takes up one parcel of land, one plot of land. If you build at a small airport, there will, you will take up the whole airport with your first building. If you're at a medium airport, then you can combine those two lots into one FBO by building a second building on the second lot or two different competing companies could have an FBO at that airport. Similarly, at a third, at a large airport with three lots, you can have uh, one large FBO that takes up all three spots. You could have a medium FBO that takes up two spots and a small one that takes up the third, or you could even have three small FBOs all competing for business at these airports. The bigger airports, unfortunately, are usually completely developed and you won't probably find too many lots at any of these. So you found an airport where you have an empty lot where you'd like to construct an FBO. So how do you go about actually building the FBO there? In order to build an FBO in FS economy, you don't actually spend money directly on it. This is part of the fun and genius part of the system. It's that in order to build an FBO, you actually need to gather building materials, which is one of the four commodities you have in the FS economy world. So you need building materials and you'll also need a little bit of supplies to build your FBO. Specifically for every lot that you want your FBO to take up, you're going to need 10,000 kilograms of building materials, plus you're going to need one day worth of supplies at a minimum in order to build your FBO. We'll talk about how much supplies your FBO will use later. How you get your building materials and your supplies to your building site is up to you. And I'll, we'll talk more about how to move goods around and deal with commodities, make money off commodities in a future video. But let's say that you have gathered the requisite 10,000 kilograms of building materials and a couple of kilograms of supplies to get your FBO up and running. How do you actually go about building your FBO? To do that, you go to the FBO menu here, go to the very first option here, FBO, and if you want to, you can select a group. One very important note, if you don't see your airport listed here, suitable locations for new FBO, it might be that a group owns your commodities instead of you personally. So when you buy commodities, you buy them either for yourself or for a group. Only the person or group that actually owns the commodities will be able to control their use for building a new FBO. So you can see that my group here that I created, Captain Nabs Enterprises, has a suitable location for a new FBO here in Morden, Manitoba. I've collected enough building materials. I've connect collected enough uh, supplies to run the FBO for at least a couple of days. So I can go ahead and type in the identifier where I want to build the FBO, hit submit, go through the little anti-spam measure. and pick a name for your new FBO. I'm just gonna call it Morden Flight Services for now, and you can always change this later. And voila, I now have my first FBO here built. Morden Flight Services, its status is currently open. It occupies a one lot here in Morden, Manitoba. 
I have 280 supplies on hand, which is enough for 14 days of operation using 20 per day. And uh, I can then also perform a bunch of other operations with my FBO. So once you own an FBO, of course, you can manage it like anything else in the FS economy world. Go to the FBO menu and you'll see information about your FBO. And you can also, of course, click the edit button. The edit button lets you change the various parameters of your FBO, including its name, whether or not you're going to put it up for sale, public sale, or directly to another user as a private sale for the specified amount. Uh, you can set an invoice background here as a, this is just an image. When uh, other users come to your FBO to do maintenance, they'll get an invoice. If you want to have like a customized invoice with your company logo on it, you can uh, upload a customized invoice background there. You can of course set prices for fuel. If you go down to the bottom, you can also set prices for various commodities that you buy and sell. The difference between the fuel here and the fuel down here is this is retail fuel being sold directly out of your fuel trucks into airplanes. This down here as commodities is uh, barrels of fuel that you can send that people can then ship on their aircraft to other places where there may not be fuel available and they may need some. What you'll also notice here in the middle is that we can also build a few more facilities, a repair shop and a passenger terminal. Each one of these extra facilities is going to take an additional 2,000 kilograms of building supplies to build. So a repair shop is where maintenance is done, where aircraft can come and get their inspections and regular maintenance done, and also where you can get avionics installations done. And if it happens at an FBO that you own, you get a percentage of the total charges to the end user. So let's go ahead and build a repair shop here in Morden. I do have 2,000 kilograms of building materials here, so let's build a repair shop. And now we have a repair shop available. If I go back into edit, you'll see that now instead of building it, I now have profit margins available. So these profit margins are how much additional percentage you're going to charge over the actual cost of doing the work as a profit to your business. The defaults here, 20% and 50% are pretty high and a lot of other FBOs have set it a lot lower. You can explore the FS economy world and see what other people charge and uh, you'll probably more likely to get more business if you charge a lot less than trying to charge a whole lot. People will just simply avoid your FBO. Now the other thing of course you can do on this page is change the amount that you charge for fuel. Right now I charge zero dollars for 100 low lead, zero dollars for jet A. Not going to make much money that way. There is a max set in here so that you can't charge a ridiculous amount. However, everything else, like everything else in FS economy, it is a free market. If you charge a lot for a particular commodity, people will probably not purchase very much of it or they'll avoid your FBO altogether. So you want to charge a reasonable price. My suggestion would be to do some research around your FBO and find out what a common cost of fuel is at other places near your FBO. So there's an airport six miles away that doesn't have any any uh, fuel available. Let's see if I can find anything nearby that has some fuel available. No, nope. kind of caught in the middle of nowhere. So what I'll do is I'll go to the nearest big airport I'm aware of, which is Winnipeg, Manitoba. Let's go there and see how much they charge for fuel there. So here we have an FBO, we also have local market. Anywhere you see local market, this is the uh, FS economy generated FBO that uh, you can't uh, buy, can't close down. It just simply sells uh, fuel just in case there's no privately owned FBOs at the field. But usually most people will undercut it. So you'll see they're charging $4.09 for 100 low lead, three seventy-five for Jet A. I might charge a little bit less than that just to see if I can lure in some extra business. So we'll charge three ninety-nine for our 100 low lead and maybe 359 for our jet A. So let's do that. So we said 399 for our 100 low lead. Three, we'll make it 369 for our jet A. However, at this point, if I still go back to more than flight services, nobody will be able to buy any jet fuel or 100 low lead fuel from me because I don't have any. As you can see, the amount listed here is zero gallons. I haven't got any jet fuel or 100 low lead because I haven't ordered any. So how do you get jet fuel and 100 low lead into your FBO? Well, you could buy it by the barrel, but when you run an FBO, you want to buy it by the truckload. So again, we go into the FBO management screen and you'll see we can order supplies, but we can also order fuel. So this is the bulk fuel order page. This is where you can actually order fuel to be sold through your FBO. 
You'll see the identifier here. You'll see a reminder of how much fuel you actually have in the tanks at your FBO. I've got a grand total of zero. And then you can specify how many tankerfuls of fuel you want to order. You can't order a small amount. You have to order it by a whole tanker load. 5,000 kilograms uh, is the minimum, or you can do multiples thereof. Once you click submit on this, it's going to offer you a delivery date, uh, a date where you're going to uh, receive your fuel. There's a time lag between you ordering the fuel, truck drives over to the refinery, picks up the fuel, delivers it to your FBO. It's going to be randomly generated somewhere between one and three days later, 24 to 72 hours after you place your order. There is a chance to opt out of the order on the next page if you don't like the delivery schedule. However, once you've made this inquiry and requested uh, an, or an order delivery date to be scheduled, you won't be able to make another request for 24 hours. So this prevents people from hitting this multiple times, trying to always get that 24 hour delivery window. So once you've made a request, you can't get another request in there until either if you decline it, 24 hour timeout, or if you accept it, until the fuel loads are actually delivered and then you can request your next fuel load. So make sure it's going to be what you think you're going to need. You can order 100 Lola and Jet A at the same time and that's what I'm going to have to do today. Before we can do that, you can get a little price quote down here. So let's get a quote here quickly and determine how much uh, 5,000 kilograms or 1861 gallons of 100 Lola equals $7,407. And just for curiosity's sake, 7407 divided by the 1861 gallons means that it's costing me 398 just to buy this fuel. So at 399, I'm not going to make any money off this fuel. I'm going to have to probably charge a little bit more in order to make at least some kind of margin off the fuel that I bought here. Otherwise, I'll basically be losing money on every transaction. So let's have a quick look here at Jet A as well. This is going to cost $6,800 per, so that's about $14,200. So I do not have enough money in the group's bank account here. I have $168.66. So how am I going to get $14,300 that I need in order to buy this uh, fuel? Well, I can go to my personal bank account and I can withdraw the money I need. $14,300. But wait, I don't have enough money in the bank. How does that work? Well, the nice thing about FS Economy is that your personal bank account has a line of credit with your bank. You can use, you can go into negative up to $40,000 with your bank. You'll see it shows in red, shows in brackets here. I now owe the bank this money. I have negative balance. So I have a line of credit with the bank. There's two caveats to this. The first is that in order to be eligible for this line of credit, you have to have finished 10 flights in the FS Economy world. You're required to generate some kind of credit in the world by finishing 10 flights. If you haven't done 10 flights, you can't go negative in your bank balance. The second thing is that you will be charged interest on this negative bank balance. It's calculated every night. Uh, it works out to 10% uh, 10 annually is how much interest is charged, but it's recalculated every single night. So every night that you owe money to the bank, you're gonna lose a couple of cents. So don't leave yourself in the red too long. You'll notice I still don't have this in the right place. I have to transfer it to Captain Nabs Enterprises because that's the guy who owns the FBO. That's the group that owns the FBO. So I transfer it from my account to that one, 14,300. And I will now have enough money to go back and buy my fuel. Bulk fuel order confirmation. So I'm now placing an order for the Morden Flight Services Airport located at CGA3, 5,000 kilograms of 100 low lead and jet A, total cost 14,200, estimated delivery date 2020-1001, that's today, a little bit later today. So uh, that's actually gonna work out really well. I'm gonna have it in the tanks in just a couple of hours. So you'll see I hit submit. Um, nothing happened yet because it hasn't been delivered yet. At some point it'll get delivered, but you'll of course see that I don't have any money left. So the delivery, the order was processed. So eventually I'm going to have some fuel. I can actually buy some fuel, uh, sell some fuel at my FBO. So let's talk a little bit about how to keep your FBO running day to day. Every FBO will require supplies. This is another commodity in the FS economy world that you need to make sure you have in stock to keep your FBO running. This would represent things like just paper and, and pens and computers and anything that your FBO might go through on a daily basis. The amount of supplies you're going to need is going to depend on how big your FBO is and how big the airport is where you're based. So there's a little chart right here. You'll see it's basically determined by multiplying the number of the level of the airport by the level of the FBO and multiplying that by 10. So a small FBO at a small airport will only use 10 kilograms per day. 
In my case here at Morden Flight Services, I'm at a medium-sized airport, but I'm only a small FBO that only takes up one lot, so I'm only it's only costing me 20 kilograms per day to operate this FBO. However, if I was to build out onto the other lot and double the size of my FBO, my supply consumption will go up to 40 kilograms per day. And of course, if you have a really big FBO, a large FBO at a large airport, you're going to use as much as 90 kilograms per day of supplies. So you'll see here on my status page, it shows me that I have 280 kilograms of supplies at the current rate of 20 per day. That's 14 days worth of supplies. So what happens if you run out of supplies? If you run out of supplies at your FBO, your FBO is going to be shut down. Initially, it's just going to be closed. It's not going to be able to provide any services to anybody that drops by your airport. However, it's still going to be your FBO. However, every day that it doesn't operate, it's still going to in incur a debt of that many supplies, a back order of supplies that you have to then fulfill to get the FBO back open again. If you wait 45 days, and after 45 days of having a negative supply count, you still have not managed to get enough supplies to your FBO to open it again, the airport is going to repossess your FBO. You're going to lose the entire FBO, everything you put into it, all the materials that are stored at it, and you're not going to have anything to show for it. The airport's not going to compensate you anything. So you really don't want to lose an FBO if you can. But it's a really neat system because it also forces people to continually try to work to maintain their FBO. If people wander away from FS economy, eventually their FBO is going to be reclaimed and returned to the pool. So if you reach that 45 day limit, and you have not bought enough supplies, your airport is then going to go into the lottery. This is the lottery I talked about at the beginning. All those airports that were listed on the lottery are airports that have been, or FBOs that have been shut down because they have had, they've had uh, insufficient supplies to run. So they've been shut down for at least 45 days, and then the week where they exceed 45 days, they get taken away from the player and put in the lottery. If at the end of the day nobody buys a lottery ticket and the FBO is not awarded through the lottery, the FBO is then completely torn down and the lots are emptied out again. So those lots will be empty and eligible to build on again. Supplies are pretty easy to order. Uh, you can fly them in from another airport like any other commodity, or you can usually just order them directly at your FBO. They are somewhat expensive. 2,500 kilograms of these supplies is going to cost me $17,000. So it's going to cost me a not inconsequential amount to buy supplies for my FBO. You may be able to find them at a cheaper price elsewhere and fly them in for less than it costs to do this. For now, I don't have enough money to do this, so I'm going to have to make sure that I do at some point make some, some FS economy money and bring some supplies here in the next 14 days so my FBO does not get shut down. So now we're going to talk about one final aspect of owning an FBO, and this is probably one of the most important ones, and that is building a passenger terminal. So let's go ahead back to the edit page for my FBO here. And you'll see that I have the option to build a passenger terminal. And again, 2,000 kilograms to build a passenger terminal. Fortunately, I seem to have enough supplies for this. It's almost like I planned it this way. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a passenger, a passenger terminal. And we now have a passenger terminal facility at our FBO. The passenger terminal is probably one of the most important aspects of owning an FBO because it is the part that usually allows you to make the most money. A passenger terminal will have a bunch of gates, and these gates are basically places where passengers and cargo can wait for a flight to take them to their destination. In other words, a passenger terminal is an assignment generator in the FS economy world. So how many gates you get here in a passenger terminal is determined just like the cost of your FBO based on the size of the airport and the size of the FBO. So because it is a medium airport, size 2, but a small FBO, size 1, 2 times 1 is 2, I have 2 gates at this FBO. If I was to build out the second FBO, I would get 4 gates. You can then reserve these gates for your own use, or you can even rent them out to other people. So you can make a little bit of money by renting them to other people, and the other people will control the gates. If, if you control the gates, in this case if I reserve both of the 2 gates for my own use, then I have full control of all the gates, and I get to choose the types of cargo and the destinations. If you want to rent them out on a monthly basis, you can set a price to rent here and other players can rent them and use them to generate their own missions. You can choose a name for your air carrier here that generates these missions and you can also choose to name your missions and this is probably one of the more fun parts so you can pick anything you like here. Please keep it somewhat reasonable but you can select a name like uh, 
you could put flight simmers, you could put uh, anything you want. You could put firefighters. The reason you put the bracket S there is it's an automatic algorithm generated by the uh, by the system, if there's a bracket S there, then when there's more than one of these things sitting there, it'll put the S there. If there's no bracket S, it only works for bracket S, not for bracket ES or anything else like that. But if you put that S there in bracket, if you only have one firefighter waiting, you'll only have one firefighter. But if you have two firefighters waiting, it will pluralize it properly and say two firefighters waiting at the gate. You can set a limit to how big you want your passenger loads to be. So if you only fly small airplanes and you only want loads of no more than two passengers generated, and that's fine. You can set an expiry date. So if you want to generate jobs frequently, you can have it expire every single day. If you're not sure how often you're going to do the jobs, maybe set it to a higher number, two or three or four. Assignments are public. This means that other people can come to your FBO and fly your assignments, or if you leave it unchecked, that would be private and only you, your group, can fly these assignments. The group that owns the FBO can uh, fly these assignments. So if you want to save all the money making for yourself, that's fine. Or if you want to make it public so other people will come and fly these people out and potentially use your FBO services while flying them, then you can do that as well. You can also set a specific list of destinations, and this is where this becomes really powerful. If you have a set of FBOs, a network of FBOs nearby, you can set the places where these uh, where these uh, assignments will be generated to specifically. So let's say I want to generate to a couple of specific airports nearby. I know Winnipeg is nearby, so I want to go there. And maybe Brandon, Manitoba. CY, can't type today, CYWG, CYBR. And these will be the only destinations you'll get. Option B, if you leave this blank, is to randomly select airports within a certain distance, a certain minimum size, um, and even allows C bases to be selected. So you can have the computer randomly, the, the server randomly generate assignments for you, or you can pick the specific places you would like to go to. So there you go. There's my pasture terminal at Morden. I've now saved my names for my various commodities. So these will just be randomly, these are the assignments will be randomly generated from this list of names, randomly generated to this set of destinations. The FS Economy World generates assignments about four times a day. It does it at random. Just because there's no assignments right now doesn't mean the next time the algorithm runs it will generate an assignment. But in general, the longer it goes without more assignments being generated, it weights it more that you're more likely to get more assignments. So let's review again the revenue streams in uh, FBO ownership and FS Economy so that you can help determine if owning an FBO is really going to be a viable economic choice for you. The first and most obvious of the economic uh, revenue streams is fuel sales. Whatever money you charge for fuel above and beyond what it costs you to purchase the fuel in bulk is going to be, of course, your profit on fuel sales. Due to the dynamic nature of the economy and FS economy, that's not going to work out to all that much. Uh, most places don't charge a whole lot of margin, so you'll be competing with other FBOs. If you charge a lot for your fuel, people will probably not buy as much at your FBO. So you're not going to make a whole lot off of your fuel sales. 10, 20 cents a gallon, probably not much more than that. One of the bigger sources of income for an FBO is the ground crew fee. You've probably seen this on your assignments, the ground crew fees charged every time an assignment is finished. These go to the departure and the destination for an assignment. They represent 5% of the total value of the assignment and they're paid to the FBOs at the departure and the destination point. That 5% is normally split equally between multiple FBOs at a departure or destination if there are more than one. However, if you have the monopoly at an airport, you're going to get the entire ground crew fee. Also, even if you don't have a monopoly, but the assignment was generated by your FBO, then that FBO will get the full 5%. This may not work out to a lot on an average basis, but if a lot of your flights are being completed, a lot of your assignments are being completed, this can end up being a fair amount of income, uh, especially if the income is between two of your FBOs. If you own another FBO and you're flying back and forth between your two FBOs and other people are doing it for you as well, 10% of the total assignment uh, pay goes right back to your FBOs. So that is definitely a bigger revenue stream, or it can be if you're generating a lot of assignments and they are being flown and cashed in. The third way that you can make money at an FBO is through repairs and avionics sales through your maintenance division. This is not one that's particularly dependable. 
Again, like with the fuel sales, it is mostly determined by the market value. Usually repairs can be planned out a little bit in advance. They're not as imminent as fuel sales. So the margins, people will shop around for the best margins. So if you're charging much more than 10 or 20% for your repair and avionics margins, chances are people are going to go visit another FBO. They'll take their plane to another FBO to get it done. So you're not going to make a whole lot of margin off that. But uh, again, for your own aircraft, you can end up, you, you of course, pocket all the profit again. So f for maintaining your own aircraft, especially if you have a fleet of aircraft, this can end up saving you a lot of money in the long run. The fourth revenue stream is, of course, the sales of goods, commodities in your FS economy world. So the FS economy server, of course, sells goods at a lot of different airports, but you can also sell and buy and sell goods. And by selling goods for more than you buy them, you can oftentimes make a little bit of a profit. It's a little bit challenging to really do, mostly because the price of goods is pretty consistent everywhere, especially things like supplies are very consistent in price everywhere. The only way you'll ever really be able to make a profit is if you can convince people, not the computer, but other players to sell you uh, their supplies that they maybe don't need anymore for less than the normal buy price. And then you act as a middleman to, sell the, to pull them together and sell them to other people. The other place where it may come in handy is moving supplies to remote areas where they may not be available so much. So uh, building materials being the most common example, only being available at major airports. If you were to ship in large supplies of building materials to your airports and then sell them for uh, somewhat of a margin, but at least the shipping has been done, uh, then you may be able to make some money off of that. So uh, again, it's possible to make some money out of good sales. But like everything else in FS economy, there's so many people out there vying for the market that you're probably not going to make a whole lot of money off of good sales. The place where you're probably going to make the most money off of FS economy is through the assignments and through your passenger terminal. The passenger terminal will just generate revenue assignments and if you fly those back and forth as an air taxi operator, flying your airplanes back and forth, loading up your assignments, you're going to end up making a lot of money because you're going to be basically funding your FBO through buying fuel for, through your FBO, through paying ground handling fees back to your own FBO, and of course making revenue for actually selling, for actually flying the flights. All that revenue will be going back into your pocket. So the best way to really make money at an FBO is to be a little bit of a jack of all trades, but mostly to use it in support of a flight operation. It's very unlikely, unless you're at the busiest, biggest and busiest airports, that you're going to make enough money off of all the other ancillary fees to really cover the cost of running an FBO. The best way to make money with an FBO, an FS economy, is to use it to support your air operations. You'll make a little bit of money on the sides, maybe from supporting other players and providing service to other players, but the biggest way is through those passenger terminal assignments. Generate lots of assignments to places that you want to fly, that places are practical and sizes of assignments that are practical for the aircraft that you want to fly and you will be able to make a ton of revenue just going back and forth doing these flights in your own aircraft. So now that you've realized how much work there is in actually running an FBO, now you're thinking maybe I shouldn't be getting into the FBO game and you want to get rid of your FBO. So there's basically two ways, three ways if you will, that you can get rid of your FBO. The first one we already discussed is just simply letting it run down, go out of business, go to the lottery. If you do that, however, everything that you have put into the FBO will be lost with absolutely no credit to you. So that is probably the least ideal way, but the FBO can be removed from you if you choose not to operate it and choose not to supply it. Eventually it will go to the lottery. You will lose everything that you have with that FBO. Not an ideal way. So let's say you want to be a little bit more proactive about getting rid of your FBO. Well, you can sell the FBO. As we mentioned before on edit here, you can set a price listed as a public sale that'll be listed on the website or privately sell it directly to somebody if they've already agreed on a price that you'd like to sell it for. And then it will go on the purchase FBO page here if you do the public sale and other people can look at it and decide if they want to buy it. So the third way to get rid of an FBO is to tear it down or to demolish the FBO. If no one will buy the FBO for the price you really feel it's worth and you just don't want to operate it anymore, you can go to your FBO screen and click the tear down button over here at the end. Every time you click tear down, it's going to remove one lot size from your FBO. So if it's three lots big, the first time you hit the button, it's going to be it's going to downgrade it to two lots. The next time, of course, downgrade to one lot. And if you only have one lot left when you hit tear down, it's going to completely remove the rest of the FBO, demolish it completely. It's going to be taken out of business. 
The good thing about the teardown function is that you will get a partial refund for tearing down an FBO. You'll get back 60% of the materials that went to building it. So 6,000 6, kilograms of building materials will go back into your group's account. And if you, of course, you did any of the expansions, if you did a maintenance facility or a pasture terminal, when you demolish that last lot and completely tear down your FBO, you'll get back 60% of those materials as well. So you get back a bit of your building materials. You'll also get your supplies will go back into your uh, group or your personal pool of supplies. So you'll be able to sell those for some money or move them somewhere else to reopen another FBO. So the teardown, while you will lose some money on the teardown, you will actually still get something out of the dismantling of the FBO as opposed to letting an FBO go out of business where you lose it all and get nothing back. So that's it guys, that's basically everything you need to know about running an FBO in FS economy. It's not an easy concept, there's a lot of complexity to it. I hope I've made it a little bit easier for you guys to understand. And I hope you guys will uh, try it out. It's not for everybody. You do have to have a fairly big time commitment in order to be able to make money with an FBO. But for those of you that are interested, I hope that uh, this video has taught you something. And I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel. We're going to have one more video about FS Economy coming out in a little while. All about uh, goods and assignments in FS Economy. A little bit more of a detailed breakdown of how they all work. But in the meantime, go out there, have fun, and we'll see you in the FS Economy world.